today, Kush Fu and I are going to read uh, the Bhagavad Gita, Discourse 13, verses 23 to 34. And this discourse is called Matter and Spirit. And so I'm reading from um, the Penguin Classic, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, translated by Lori Patton, which is a more poetic translation. Uh, then I'm reading from a prose translation, which is translated by Sri Purohit Swami. And this is from the Light Illuminations Bhagavad Gita. And the third version I'm reading from is uh, the Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita, uh, translated by, by R.K. Sharma, with Carol Pitts and Les Morgan. So, Sloke 23. Ya eva vethi purusha prakruti cha guneha saha sarvatha vartamano dapi na sa bhuyo dabhija yate. Slok 23. The one who recognizes matter and spirit together with the gunas is not ever born again, no matter what way they already exist. The prose reads, He who understands God and nature along with her qualities, whatever be his condition in life, he comes not again to earth. And the footnote reads, in commenting on this verse, Sri Aurobindo says that there are two basic attitudes one can take toward nature. One, that of the pure witness, utterly detached and free, which impersonally enjoys and observes, but does not identify with the actions of nature. And two, that of the upholder and sustainer of nature, supporting and conducting the energy with, which enrolls the spectacle of the cosmos. The second attitude represents an important step forward toward identification with the divine joy of cosmic being. And the Sharma reads, He who thus knows consciousness and nature, along with the gunas, is not born again, regardless of whatever lifestyle he has. Slope 24. Jnani natmani pashyanti kechi datmana matmana anye sadakhena Yogena, Karma Yogena, Chapare. Slope 24. Some see the self in the self, through the self, by meditation. Others see it through yo the yoga of Samkhya, and others see it through the yoga, yoga of action. That was the pattern. The prose reads, some realize the supreme by meditating by, it, by its aid on the self within, others by pure reason, others by right action. And the footnote reads, by pure reason, literally, by Samkhya Yoga. Here Samkhya Yoga stands for the spiritual practice of discernment, viveka, between the real and the unreal, according to Furistein. The Sharma reads, some people realize the self through the self by meditation on the self. Others realize the self by the yoga of knowledge and others by the yoga of action. And there's a footnote, compare verses 239 and 33, slope 25. Ani, we Majantantaha Shrutvani Bhya Upasate 
तेदपि चातीत्यरत्नव मृत्यु श्रुति परायणा श्लोक But some do not know in this way, and when they have heard from others, they worship, and also cross beyond death, devoted to that revelation. Crows reads, Others again have no direct knowledge, but only hearing from others, nevertheless worship, and they, do, and they too, if true to the teachings, Across the sea of death. And the Sharma reads, others, however, not knowing thus, show reverence after hearing this teaching from others. Those followers of Vedic injunctions also certainly cross over death. Slope 26. यावत्से ज्यायते किचित्यस्व स्थावर जद्दमम क्षेत्र क्षेत्रज्ञ संयोग्यतत्व दिद्विही भरत शभ श्लोक 26 The pattern reads Bull of the Bharatas recognize that when any being moving or still is born It is from the union of the sacred ground and the one who knows the sacred ground. The prose reads, whenever life is seen in things movable or immovable, it is the joint product of mat matter and spirit. Sharma reads, Whatever immo immobile or mobile being is created, O bull among the Bharatas, know that it know that is due to the union of the Kasetra and the Kasetra Ja Jna. How do you say that word? Kasetra Ja Jna. Okay. Slug 27. <laughs> समह सर्वेशु भूतेशु तिष्ठन्त परमेश्वरम विनश्यतस्य व विनस्यता यह पश्यति स पश्यति श्लोक 27 the one who sees the highest lord abiding alike in all beings not dying even as they die that one truly sees it's the pattern the prose reads he who can see the supreme lord in all beings the imperishable amid the perishable he it is who really sees the sharma reads one who sees the imperishable supreme lord equally I'll start that again one who sees the imperishable supreme lord equally present in all perishable beings that person truly sees slope 28 sama pashyanhi सर्वत्र समवस्थितमिश्वरम न हिनस्त्यात्मनात्मान तमो यति परा गतिम श्लोक 28 seeing the lord existing everywhere that one does not do harm to the self through the self that one then goes along the highest way <clears throat> the prose reads beholding the lord in all things equally his actions do not mar his spiritual life 
but lead him to the height of bliss. And the footnote reads, his actions do not mar his spiritual life. <clears throat> An alternative reading is the self cannot injure the self, or he cannot harm the self by the self, meaning that if we see the self in all beings, we do not hurt anyone, because to do so would be to hurt our own self in another form. The Sharma reads, <clears throat> One who sees the Lord as truly residing everywhere equally does not harm the self with the self. Thereafter, one attains the supreme goal. And there's a footnote. If one sees one's own self in every being and every being in one's own self, where can there be any hatred or delusion? See Isa Upanishad verses six through seven, slope 29. Prakrutyeva cha karmani kriya manani Sarva Saha Ya Pashyati Tathatma Namakartara Sa Pashyati. Slope 29. The pattern reads One who sees all actions done wholly by means of matter, that one's own self is not the agent. That one sees clearly. The prose reads, he who understands that it is only the law of nature that brings action to fruition and that the self never acts, alone knows the truth. And the Sharma reads, one who sees that all actions are performed by nature alone and that one's true self is actionless that person truly sees. There's a footnote, compare verses 14, 19, and 18, 16. Slok 30. Yada Bhuta Putha Gabhava Meka Syaptha Manu Pashyati Tata Eva Cha Vistara Braham Hasya Sampadhate Tada Slukhati. The pattern reads When one sees the multiplicity of states of being abiding in one and spreading out from that one alone, one then arrives at Brahman. Prose reads, he who sees the diverse forms of life all rooted in the one and growing forth from him, he shall indeed find the absolute. The Sharma reads, when one sees the diversity of various beings as abiding in one and expansion is from that one alone, then that person becomes identifiable with Brahman. Slope 31. Anaditva ni guna, gunavat paramatma yama vyaya shari shari sthodapi kon na karoti na lipyate. Slope 31. The pattern reads, Son of Kunti, because this highest imperishable self has no beginning and no gunas, it neither acts nor is sustained nor is stained. 
even though abiding in the body. The prose reads, the Supreme Spirit, O Prince, is without beginning, without qualities, and imperishable. And though it be within the body, yet it does not act, nor is it affected by action. The Sharma reads, being without beginning and transcending the gunas, this imperishable supreme self neither acts nor is contaminated by action, even though residing in the body, O son of Kunti. And uh, there is footnote, see verse 1861. Um, God resides in the heart of all beings, O Arjuna. And uh, I was told by um, the editor-in-chief of this book um, that Samyoga union of the real self with that which it, it is perceiving. Okay, so this is the union that you and I were talking about earlier. Okay. Slope 32. Yatha Sarva Gata Shongya Maya Dakasa Nopa Lipyate Sarva Travas Tito Dehe Tathatma Nopa Lipyate Slopati Tu. The pattern reads. Just as space pervades all, and yet because of its subtlety is not stained, everywhere the self, while abiding in the body, is not stained. The prose reads, as space, though present everywhere, remains by reason of its subtlety unaffected, so the self, though present in all forms, retains its purity unalloyed. The Sharma reads, as space due to its subtlety is not contaminated through omnipresent, so the self is not contaminated dwelling in every body. Slope 33. Yata Prakasha Yaka Krutasenaha Loka Mima Ravi Kshetra Kshetri Tatha Krutsanaha Prakasha Yati Bharata Slok 33 Son of Bharata, as a single sun lights up this whole realm, so too the one who dwells in the sacred ground lights up this whole sacred ground. <clears throat> Prose reads, as the one sun illuminates the whole earth, so the Lord illumines the whole universe. The Sharma reads, as one sun illuminates the entire world, so the Kasetrim, the lord of the field, illuminates the entire Kasetra, O descendant of Bharata. Slok 34. Kshetra Kshetra Gayoreva Mantara Jnana Chakshusha Bhuta Prakruti Moksha Cha Ye Vidyuyanti Te Parama Slope 34 The pattern reads, The one who knows through the eye of wisdom the difference between sacred ground and the knower of sacred ground 
and the freedom of matter from being, they go to the highest. The prose reads, Those who with the eyes of wisdom thus see the difference between matter and spirit and know how to liberate life from the law of nature, they attain the supreme. And there's a generic footnote by Swami Vivekananda, which reads, nature's task is done, this unselfish task, which our sweet nurse that nature had imposed upon herself. She gently took the self-forgetting soul by the hand, as it were, and showed him all the experiences in the universe, all manifestations, bringing him higher and higher through various bodies, till his lost glory came back and he remembered his own nature. Then the kind mother went back the same way she came, for others who have also lost their way, in the trackless desert of life. And thus is she working without beginning and without end. And thus through pleasure and pain, through good and evil, the infinite river of souls is flowing into the ocean of perfection, of self-realization. Wow, that's quite beautiful. And the Sharma reads, thus though, Thus, those who understand with the eye of knowledge the difference between the Kasetra and the knower of the Kasetra and liberation from nature and its evolutes, they attain identity with the Supreme Brahman. And there's a Kalafan. Here ends the 13th chapter named the Yoga of Discrimination between Nature and the Knower of Nature in the Upanishads sung by Lord Sri Krishna in the dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna in the scripture of yoga pertaining to knowledge about Brahman. So that is the end of Discourse 13. Uh, the next section is called the Three Qualities. So thank you, Kushbu. Um, we'll do this again soon. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. Have a good rest bye -bye. of your week. Bye.